what we're going to do is we're going to look at a whole bunch of different lessons. We're going to look at a matrix and that way you kind of walk away with a whole bunch of different ideas. Just how do I utilize this space? Because it's, you know, it's great uh, to have it, it's pretty, but we want you to take your students out. And so you got to have something to do when you get out here and it's a little bit frightening, but I'll be honest with you, it's the same thing that you do inside. That's really all it is. It's the same thing that you do inside. And so we're going to get started and I'm going to give you this matrix. And the way that this matrix works is it's divided into columns. We have the engage column, we have the explore column, we have the elaborate column. And then the lessons are like this. So this is one lesson that goes straight across. This is another lesson that goes straight across. Another lesson, there's five lessons on here. And these are from our website. I have taken them and I have taken the title off of them and taken out some of the steps that would clue you in on what it is. And I have what the students are doing. So I want you to read it. You can read it by yourself. You can do it by yourself. Uh, you can work with a partner and do it, however you want to do it. And I want you to read across this way and think about what would the students be doing? What would I be doing? Where would I be standing? How would this look? How would that one kid in my class do with something like this? You know, that kid that we're talking about. And then at the very end, your job over here in this column is I want you to write down what grade level you think it is and what concept or objective. You can write the specific SE if you want to. You can put, you know, 2.3 or you can just write the concept or, or the objective in words, whatever, whatever you think. Questions? All right, good deal. So if you're looking at a side that's already written on, it's the side they just did. That was the upper grade science. So you want to focus on the reading language arts, kinder through second. I'll pass these out and then I'll get you a dry erase marker. I liked hearing the collaboration that you had and some of the comments that you made and some of the questions. We had a great question over here about do you let your students work in partners when you do these things or do you have them go off by themselves? And so during that explore time is when he was talking about. Uh, in the upper grades, I almost always have them walk off on their own, maybe with a partner, maybe in a small group, and they'll do some exploring and they'll walk around and then, and then I'll call them back. A lot of times with my kinder and first, they're just not ready for that. So we're going to do more of a guided explore and we're going to go off and do the same type of exploring, but we're going to do it as a group. I still want them to be kind of leading it. I'm just there kind of guiding them from one place to the other, but the conversations and the thoughts that they're having, I want them to have it because that's not my teaching time. That's them to their time to do their exploring and their learning to make those mistakes. And then you fix that during the explain time. So we'll do a guided explore with kindergarten a lot of times where I kind of walk off station to station with them, wherever it may be. And I'm kind of directing the time and, and it's a little bit more focused that way. Uh, but it's still their time to their time to think. All right, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna start with the first lesson. We're gonna go straight across and I just want you to tell me uh, what grade level it is and then what concept it is that you're thinking. So the first one, name things you see, think about those letters. Kinder? Pre-K through K. Maybe first grade, beginning of the year review. So what's the concept being taught? Letter knowledge and initial sounds. There we go. So beginning of the year, first grade, possibly reviewing, depending on the class that you have. Yeah. Uh, create a class alphabet book using the words that came from your outdoor classroom. So this is a great time to come outside and you can look at different things that start with different letters and then take a picture of them. You know, this is our W, or this is our, you know, garden bed, that's our G, or that's our bench, that's a B. And then take those and then put them together and have your own alphabet book. You know, print out that picture, and here's our B page, here's my student standing next to the bench, that's, that's our B page. And then we've got our C page, and then our D page, right? Or maybe it's actually looking at the different things that they make. Like if I look at this tree, do we see a letter with that tree? Can we, can we find letters in nature or letters outside? Maybe it's this fence post over there and we see an H or maybe they see an L. So it's also identifying letters could be the same thing. 
And I know that down there on lesson five, it's kind of that same, same look for letters in the natural and make a list of the ones that you could see and not see. So it could, it could work, work two different ways. All right, collect a total, lesson two, collect a total of 10 outdoor objects. What grade level? Okay, kinder first. What are they doing though? Okay. That one's a little bit confusing. This is the language arts side, right? So, so how many of you have to integrate some of your lessons? right all the time because we just don't have the time to do what we need to do so I'm gonna start off and it's kinda gonna do a little review or maybe some math and I'm gonna have them go collect some objects compare them wherever they are you know uh, and then from there what I really want them to do with this lesson is they're creating their own little character out of leaves and sticks and stuff like that and then I have them glue that in their journal I do this at the beginning of the year and then that's their mascot so they'll take their leaves, they'll take their sticks, they'll put them in a baggie, and then they write character traits about their mascot, and they give it a name. Because I know, and you know, that we have some people that are reluctant to share. They're reluctant to write. And so anytime I have an exit ticket in my journal, I don't have them write to me. I don't have them talk to me. They write to their mascot. They talk to their mascot. And so they create this little lion or a little leaf man or whatever it is. They put it in their journal at the beginning of the year. They've come out, they've collected their objects. They've, you know, they've done the character traits and written down the personality of their little friend. That's their journal. And then I'm saying, okay, here you go. I want you to share with, you know, Bob, you know, what it is that you learned today. Or, and then they'll tell Bob everything that they learned, everything that they did, and then you can read it or you can listen to it and really understand, did they get the, did they get the lesson? Did they not get it? But it's just that they take ownership in it is what it is. All right, number three, play I Spy. That sounds fun. What grade level gets to play I Spy? What did you do second? Second grade, all right. So then what's the concept? Physical properties, that's science though. That would be on the other side. We're doing language arts. So what language arts concept is it? Adjectives. Adjectives, descriptive words. So this is, this is pulled from a second grade lesson. It could be used with first grade, but descriptive writing and adjectives, um, this is a second grade lesson. But again, I'm doing some integrating. I'm gonna go collect, a, you know, give them a, a zip, give them a bag and they're gonna go collect some leaves and rocks. They're gonna come back, maybe do some describing of it. And then they're gonna have this word bank. Same with weather. You know, I like my writing teachers, and y'all are self-contained, but in the upper grades, sometimes some schools, they're not self-contained. And so I love having my writing teachers. I like them to do weather data as well. They'll come out before they do a lesson just really quick. I want you to describe the day. Just think of the ways you could describe today. You know, it's breezy, it's cool, it's clear, it's sunny, and then it's crisp. And then they get that word bank. I integrated a little bit of weather data collecting, but now I've got all those different adjectives that I can use. So this was an actual writing lesson. All right, here's my favorite one. What about number four? Pull weeds. We said K K Kindergarten? K1. K1. And then sequencing, good job. So at first you're like, pull weeds, child labor laws, right? Okay, well, here's reality, you know. Your garden coordinator is not going to come out and pull all the weeds. No, that's just, that's just not going to happen. And so I come out with my class, and I've got 20 first graders, and we're going to say, hey, I want you to pull some weeds. And they're going to come out, and they're going to pull their weeds, and then we're going to talk about the step-by-steps that they did. And then we're going to put them on sentence strips. We're going to move them around. We're going to do some beginning, middle, and end. We're going to do some sequencing. We're going to write, do a how-to paper. But I also got probably one bed completely cleared out of weeds because it only takes about one minute for 20 first graders to, pull, to clean out a bed. I want you to flip that paper over, and I want you to look at the big kid side. Look at lesson number four. What's the engage? Pull weeds. That's actually an energy lesson. Energy. 
Yeah, it's actually an energy lesson, but the engage to get them started is they're pulling weeds and then you say, hey, what type of energy? Oh, that was mechanical energy. Okay, well, we just cleaned out of bed. It took about two minutes. And now I want you to go off and I want you to find, you know, the different light energy, electric energy, sound energy. So it's just a quick little, and are they going to remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're definitely, they're going to remember it. They're going to be hooked. They're going to take ownership of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot that you could tie with social studies. A lot of integration. Okay, so how many of you now feel like you have some ideas and you feel a little bit more comfortable that you could bring your students out because that's what it's about, is getting you outside and getting you comfortable to come outside with your students and teach. So for me, it's um, how being outside stimulates the creativity and the imagination. Even in myself as an adult, you know, I, can, I was able to imagine and think of things and create um, in a way that I don't think I would have been able to just sitting inside, you know, it's, I don't know, something about being outside and being able to interact with the things and kind of see and touch and feel mm -hmm. brings that mm -hmm. emotional side to it, you know, and so that and then it's that the garden really offers more than just your opportunities in science. So they're like when we were sitting over there doing the lesson with Wendy and just how vocabulary development um, for like ELA and for reading uh, and helping them, the students develop that range of vocabulary that they have just by being outside and using that those different like physical properties for example you know physical characteristics so good job give them a round okay, okay for me uh, this is what i wrote the sensory stimulation of just being outdoors opens all possibilities to motivate students into exploring the universe around them the sun the wind the sounds all right, good deal, I like it. Uh, both of them, they kind of touch a little bit about what we've been talking about all morning. You know, immediately people think science. They do think science, it's real easy. Uh, most of the lessons when I go up and observe teachers, they're actually math lessons. But I see more math lessons than I see science lessons, believe it or not. And then probably second would be science, but tied with language arts. I see a lot of language arts lessons done outside, especially with writing. Um, so it, it, yeah, vertical alignment, definitely. And in, in my session when you were with me, a lot of integration. There's a lot of integration out here. And really it's taking that, what they learned on this paper. You know, you can say, hey, I understand how to look at this rectangle and figure out the perimeter and the area of it. But then can you actually take it and come outside and apply what you've learned? or do the reverse. Can you come outside and understand that concept and then turn it around and understand when it's written on a standardized test, because that is the reality of the world that we live in, for them to be able to apply it. And they can, they can. So I like that y'all are seeing the, some of the same things. He mentioned the emotional part of it, uh, social, social emotional. Quick story is uh, one of our outdoor classrooms we have, uh, it was a uh, I think it was in Dallas. I'm not sure where it was at, but we had a little girl that was nonverbal. And after they got their garden installed and the teacher started utilizing it, she would come out every day at 10 o'clock and she would look at the weather vane, the wind vane, and she would see which direction the wind was blowing. And then she started with those words north, south, east, and west. And she was actually utilizing and saying those words. And this is a girl that had never talked at all, but it was something that she was proud of that space. She took ownership of it and she saw it. And so there's a lot of social emotional. So I like my counselors, they'll utilize it for cool down spaces and things like that. So, all right.